23, 1884. A train was passing close to Tombstone, Arizona Territory, carrying a party of roistering political conventioneers headed for Chicago. But two of the men on the train were not going to Chicago. <laughs> boys don't look happy. Why ain't you happy going to Chicago to nominate that great American Grover Cleveland? <laughs> Say, you ain't blame men, are you? Why, we'd throw blame men right off of this train. Now, look here. I don't want any trouble. I'm Bledsoe, Deputy Marshal from San Antonio. And this here's Sam Carver. Murdered an express agent in the holdup. Then broke jail by killing an unarmed guard. I ran him down in Prescott. And now we're heading back. And neither of us is in the mood for any hijinks. Well, maybe you don't feel like hijinks, Marshal. But the condemned man looks like he needs a little cheering up. How about a drink, Carver? He's not drinking. What's the harm in the poor devil having a bracer? Huh, boys? All right. If I let him have one drink, Will you boys leave us alone? Quite sure, Marshal. Just one little drink. But so it's the Grove of Cleveland. Stand in your tracks. This man never moves up, kill him. Stone Territory. An actual account from the pages of my newspaper, the Tombstone Epitaph. This is the way it happened, in the town too tough to die. June 24, 1884. Morning, Clay. Uh, bringing your diary up to date? No, accounts, book work, reports. People have the idea that being a sheriff is one tenth chasing after criminals and nine tenths sleeping in the sun. Ah, don't get yourself all riled up so early in the morning. It's bad for your liver. And I hear you've got somebody to chase. Yeah, Sam Carver. He was being taken in for murder when he jumped a train last night north of here. Sam Carver. Wasn't he mixed up in that cattle rustling and butchering ring here about three years ago? That's right. I couldn't prove anything definite on him, but the feeling was running so high in town that I had to move him out of Tombstone for his own protection. See, I'm gonna go out and talk to his sister, Amy Hendricks. She and uh, Roy are mighty good people, Clay. Hard workers, devoted to that youngster of theirs. And it's a wonder what they've done to the old Walker place since they took it over now. Now, why ride out there and get Amy all upset about her brother? You'll get the news soon enough. We'll see. What do you mean? Well, Carver's on foot without money and supplies. He just might head for the place where he's sure getting help. If he suddenly showed up there, Roy and Amy might get involved. I want to make sure they don't. Roy! 
Laura and Amy Hendricks aren't the kind of aid and a better murderer, even if he is a relative. Well, maybe not, but the report said Carver was armed. He may not have a choice. <laughs> Sassy Coon you got there. His name's Bandit. See the mask over his eyes? Yeah. So your folks home? Well, Pop ain't, but my mom is. Bruce, it's almost lunchtime. Well, hello, Clay. What brings you out to see us? Well, I, uh... Better go wash up, Bruce. Yeah, sure. See you later, Mr. Hollister. Yes, Clay. The boy tells me your husband isn't home, Miss Hendricks. I'm sorry. I wanted to talk to both of you. When was the last time you heard from Sam? About eight months ago, he wrote us from San Antonio. He needed money. He's not in trouble, is he? I'm afraid so. What happened? He killed two men, badly injured another one. Oh, no, there must be some mistake. Well, Sam's always been rough and wild. And he's been weak, but what well, Sam wouldn't kill. I'm sorry, ma'am. There is no mistake. You haven't changed a bit, have you, Clay? You always were ready to condemn him without proof. Why did you come out here, Sheriff, just to gloat? No, ma'am. I came out here to prepare you and to warn you. Of what? Well, there's a chance that Sam may come to you for help. If you give it to him, it's a criminal offense and subject to prosecution. Sam wouldn't come near us or Tombstone. I hope not, because if he does, I expect you to let me know. You expect? You expect, even if he were to come here, what right have you to expect me to betray him? My right as the representative of the people that gave me this badge? Your neighbors, friends. Would you betray them? Go away, please. At times I'm not overly fond of my job. This happens to be one of them. I suppose you were just doing your duty. I'm, I'm sorry. All I'm asking is for you and Roy to be careful. You will have it, then the blood's thicker than water, won't you? Isn't it? of the law seems a little crestfallen. There is ought to be a special course in how to deal with women. Kitten have claws? Oh, no, no, not that, but I did get her upset. Maybe you're right. Maybe it is all for nothing. Now, one thing I've learned in a checkered career, Clay, the view's terrible looking backward. If you made a botch of things, forget it. Thanks. And as for women, you could study them for the rest of your life and wind up an ignoramus on the subject. As Alexander Pope said, Woman's at best, a contradiction still. Miss Clyburn, you're a great comfort to me. Not me. Alexander Pope. Yes, sir. Said Sheriff? That. Sheriff said what? When? Oh, yesterday. They're looking for you, Sam. They say you killed two men. Amy, it wasn't like that. You've got to believe me. I killed the first man in self-defense. I was innocent, but they were going to hang me anyway. 
And the second man? I tried to get away. The guard tried to gun me down like a dog. It was either him or me. Oh, Sam, I knew you couldn't kill anybody. We haven't got any time for any tears. I'm hurting. I need help bad. Oh, your leg. What have you done to it? The iron cut it when I jumped off the train. I hobbled for miles. The leg swole up. Then an old Mexican in a wagon picked me up. He saw the irons, but he didn't care none. Not when I gave him my watch. How long have you been up here? Why didn't you call me sooner? I came in last night. I didn't dare rouse anybody. I don't know who's all living here on the place with you and Roy. Maybe a hired hand or two, nervous with a shotgun. Where is Roy? He's away, but he'll be back soon, maybe even tonight. There's nobody here but Bruce and me. Just as well. I was figuring on trouble with Roy anyway. He's always been too righteous for me. Sam, you know you and Roy never got along, but he wouldn't deny you help, not with your hurt like this. He loves me. Why, he'd do it even if just for my sake. I can't wait for Roy. I've got to get these irons off. Have you got a, a fence wire cutter on the place? No, I don't think so. Our land's not fenced. Then you'll have to go to Tombstone and buy one. The heaviest one you can get. All I want for now is to sever through this chain so I can straddle a horse. Well, what are you waiting for? With any luck at all, I can be clear into Mexico by tonight. All right, Sam. I better take Bruce with me, though. We don't want him to learn you're up here. Young boys sometimes can't keep secrets. Do as you like. Bring me some grub before you go. And Amy. Yes? What's your tongue? Well, oh, yes, Sam. Well, now here's the muslin and the thread. There's the beans and the bacon. Now, was there anything else, Miss Hendricks? No, I think that'll be all. Huh? Oh, uh, Roy asked me to get him a pair of wire fence cutters, the heavy kind. Oh, you're building a fence, huh? I've just got the ticket for Roy. Hello, Bruce. Hello, Mr. Editor. Well, good morning, Amy. Good morning. How's Roy? He's fine, thank you. Well, now, Lee should get the job done. Well, good morning, Miss Editor, and what can I do for you? There's no hurry, Esau. You go right ahead. Some sort of person. Oh, I'll be with you in a jiffy. Now, that'll be five dollars and a half. Put the bacon right in there and the beans here. I'll keep these here so they'll be out of the, the dust. There you are. Thank you, Bruce. Now, I better let uh, Bruce carry the cutters because they're kind of heavy. Goodbye, Mr. Clevin. Goodbye, Miss Hendricks. Goodbye, Esau. Goodbye. Say hello to Roy for me. I will. And now, what was that personal matter of yours? Clay Hollister. We're just fresh out of Clay Hollister's. <laughs> what I came to see you about, Esau, I didn't want to mention him in front of the lady, needs some new suspenders. They lost their snap. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess... If you were as old as they are, you'd have lost your snap, too. <laughs> you know what? I just got these in. And they're highly recommended to keep everything taut and tidy. Well, you should do the trick. Yes. You know, I got them in special for you. Because we can't have our editor losing his trousers, can we? <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> The night of June 25, Roy Hendricks came home to his anxious and worried wife. Roy, please come into the house before you go to the barn. Amy, what's wrong? It's way after midnight. Is Bruce... I mean, no, no, darling, he's all right. Sam's here. He's in the loft. He's hurt and he's sick and the law's after him. Amy. Roy, please. 
They say he killed two men, but he told me how it happened. He couldn't help himself. Oh, Roy, I've been so frightened without you, Mary. Amy, you've got to realize and understand what this means. If Sam's in trouble with the law, innocent or not, we don't dare get mixed up in it. But he's so sick. And they had chains on his legs. I went into town to get a cutter to get him off, but by the time I got back, he was burning up with fever. He was too sick to get away like he wanted to. All right. But sick or not, we've got to find some way to get him out of here. Roy, don't antagonize him. He has a gun. <laughs> See that leg. Looks like blood poisoning to me. Reckon we better get you a doctor and fast or you're a dead man. I'm not Doc Cunningham in Tombstone. He knows me. He turned me into Hollister. But for Amy, I'd turn you in myself. She thinks this wasn't any fault of yours. It wasn't. Knowing the help I get out of you, Hendrix. Suit you to see me dead. Suit me more if you were a long ways away from here. Well, I. I got the chain cut. And I'd been gone before now. The sickness come over. I'm as weak as a kitten. Uh, there's a halfway kind of doctor living over at Pima Tanks. Drunk most of the time. Does his doctoring on cattle and horses when he's. Midland sober, but I guess he's better than nobody. What makes you think he won't play up? Money. He's done his share of patching up the law's bullets. I'll pay it, Sam, just so I can get shut of you as fast as I can. How long to get him? I'm bone tired. Gotta get a little sleep. I'll leave at daybreak with the buckboard and be back here around noon, maybe. Remember. I'm doing this for Amy. If I had my way, I'd run you off as you are or turn you over to the sheriff. Thanks. I'll remember. <laughs> so the deputy marshal had a concussion, but he'll be all right. Oh, well, now I don't have to open it. What do you mean? Oh, well, you told me what it said. Well, naturally glanced at it as I brought it over. My newspaper instinct. Naturally. Hey, the description of Carver's interesting. Description? You know what he looks like. Yeah, but I didn't know he was wearing leg irons when he jumped off the train. Leg irons? Mm -hmm. Yeah. First information said he'd freed himself. Harris, if Carver's weighted down with irons, he's got to be close around here somewhere. And he's got to have help to get rid of him. Well, what's the matter? Clay, it might just be. Confound it, it's got to be. What has to be? Amy Hendricks was in Stellings yesterday buying fence cutters. Big ones. Now that I think of it, the Hendricks place is unfenced range. Deputies due back here in a couple of minutes. Tell them where I've gone, have them stand by around the office. Now, there wasn't much doubt in Sheriff Clay Hollister's mind, or mine either. Sam Carver had to be at the Hendricks Ranch. Carver was a tough enough proposition in himself, but there were to be added complications. Not wanting Bruce to know about his uncle, Amy had kept Carver's hideout a secret. Come on, bandit. You gotta learn how to walk with a leash, and I can take you into town with me. Come on, Bandit. Don't you ever want to learn nothing? Come on. Bandit. Bandit, come on. Bandit. Bandit, where are you? Bandit, don't you think you can get away? Bandit? Mom! Mom! Shut up, 
Except your uncle. Mom! Please, uh, let me go. Mom! Mom! Please help me, Mom! Jared! Mom! Please, Mom! Sheriff, he's got bruised. Stay back. He'd kill your sister or not. My brother's sick. He's half out of his head. I've got to get Bruce. Stay here. Let me take care of him. Hello, Sam. Let's you and I talk this over. No use to talk, Sheriff. You know I'm holding all the cards. Make your fight a man's fight. Let the boy go. You want him to stay healthy? Take off your gun belt. All right, Sam. Just don't hurt that boy. That's more like it. Now, no tricks, Mike. But the boy gets it. Amy! Come in here! Sam, he's your own nephew. It's no good. He's already killed two men in cold blood. You think he's gonna start acting like the fond uncle now? Shut up. Amy, fix me some grub in a sack and a canteen of water. Me and Bruce are taking Hollister's horse. Go on. ride very far. If that leg doesn't get you, I will. Not with this little insurance policy on the saddle in front of me. If the law comes within gun range of me, the brat dies. Now go on outside. That's far enough. Turn around. Go get the horse. Bring it in. Come on, kid. Bring me that horse. Bring me that horse or I'll kill you. Don't do it, Roy. You haven't got a chance. Son? Sure, Pop. Bullet went clean through. Nothing busted. How about the other one? You won't have to do anything for him. Let's get him inside. I'm sorry, Clay. It was my fault. I believed him. It is thicker, isn't it? Spills just as easy. June 27, 1884. Buy us some breakfast? Oh, no, thanks. I had mine. Uh, Wait a minute. This might interest you. There's a story. You want to read it? You helped write it. Just help me forget about it. You know, you've got one unhandy quality in a lawman, Clay. Sensitivity. Every time you're forced to kill a man, you're in the dumps for days. You know what you thought was right? These are good. Good sheriff, good suspenders. 
Gives a citizen a nice, secure feeling. Where I want 